So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining me. My name is Elizabeth Franco, and I'm at the America's Job Center of California here in the Santa Maria office. Um, today, uh, and we are open, by the way, um, just in case, um, please spread the news. We are open Monday through Thursday from 9 to 12, and then 1 to 4, um, Monday through Thursday. We close for lunch, and then on Fridays, we're open from nine to 12 again, and then closed in the afternoon. So um, if you wouldn't mind just spreading the word that yes, we are open. Um, so again, my name is Elizabeth. I'll be your uh, presenter this afternoon. Today, the topic is uh, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, an awesome book. If you haven't read it, I highly, highly recommend it. Um, I'm going to share my screen now so we can take care of some housekeeping rules and if you have any questions um, during the presentation, I don't mind if um, you ask along the way. So I'm gonna share my screen now. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Perfect, thank you. Okay, I just wanna keep a, uh, an eye on the chat box and make sure no one else has joined us. It looks like we have a couple more people that joined us. Give me one second while I admit them into the room. Okay, hi Val. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started again. My name is Elizabeth uh, Franco and I am at the America's Job Center of California here in Santa Maria. We are open. Um, today's presentation is on seven habits of highly, highly effective people. One second here. I'm sorry, I am trying to get to the next slide and I'm having some technical difficulties. So please give me uh, a moment here. There we go. Okay, so a couple housekeeping rules. Um, if you wouldn't mind, please muting yourself while we're in the Zoom meeting. Uh, make sure that you can see the chat box. Um, this will allow us to communicate with each other. Um, I will keep an eye on the chat box uh, during this presentation. Also, um, please turn on your videos if possible, because I would love to see you, but if not, that's okay too, I understand. Um, and then again, please use the chat box for any questions or any comments. So we're gonna get started here. So together we have an opportunity to learn, share and show up for each other. Let's make a choice to do that today. That's a commitment that I do every single day. And this is one of the reasons why I really like um, Franklin Covey's, Stephen Covey's um, highly effective people. So here's a quote from Stephen Covey. The more we see people in terms of their unseen potential, the more we can use our imagination rather than our memory. Um, and basically what I got out of this quote um, when I first read the book was, um, 
if you change the way that you look at things, the things around you change. Um, and it's very similar to Franklin Covey's um, um, quote here. And basically, if you have not read it, and if you're interested in learning um, a little bit more about um, what are the seven habits of highly effective people, uh, I highly recommend that you uh, take a look at the book. Um, the book opens up with an explanation on how, how individuals um, who have achieved high degrees of outward success still find themselves you know, struggling with um, the inner need of developing personal effectiveness and growing healthy relationships with other people. Um, so uh, according to Kobe, what he believes is the way that we see the world is entirely based on our, our own perceptions. Um, in order to change a given situation, we must change ourselves. And in order to change ourselves, we must be able to change our perceptions. So one day, um, I'll, I'll never forget the quote where if you look at the things around, if you change the things, if you change the way that you look at things around you, the things around you change has just really pressed upon me um, over the course of the last probably, I think I read this book over 10 years ago. But um, Kobe believes um, that the way that we see the world is entirely based on your own perceptions. So in a study that he did um, with over 200 years of literature on the concept of success, what Kobe identified um, was a very important change in the way that humans have, ha have defined success over time. So in the earlier times, the foundation of success rested upon the characteristics um, or the character um, ethics of things like um, humility, um, courage, justice, patience. Uh, and then in the 1920s, <clears throat> excuse me, the way people viewed success shifted to what Kobe called personality ethics. And that's what we're gonna dive into. Um, so who am I? Um, I am a habit is basically um, what, what Kobe um, identifies here. Am I your constant companion? Am I your greatest helper? Um, am I easily managed? Um, um, am I a servant of great leaders? Am I a machine through, through the work that I do? Um, be easy with me and I will destroy you. Who am I? So it's a habit, basically. What we're learning is to change um, different habits. Uh, right now, during this time, or really any time, um, sometimes we're tired and we're stressed and overwhelmed and, and frustrated. Um, so life can be stressful um, because it is stressful and problems seem to arise daily and uh, we can't avoid having problems in our life. It's just part of um, life. And so the way to effectively manage them um, is to integrate some positive and good behaviors and habits um, so that we can deal with the pressures of life, right? So um, I think now, nowadays, um, people look at, people look at um, for quick fixes um, or instant gratification and they see a successful person, a team, or an, and an organization, and they say, well, how do they do that? Um, this is one way um, the seven habits of highly effective people is, is just one paradigm shift that we are going to talk about, but there's others out there too. Um, so bottom line, again, if the way that we see a problem is a problem, then it is a problem. Um, so we must allow ourselves to undergo some paradigm shifts to change ourselves fundamentally and not just alter our attitudes, <clears throat> excuse me, and behaviors on the surface level in order to achieve um, true change. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with the habits. Excuse me here. Hi, Rosie, I see you. <laughs> so here's an overview of the seven habits of um, ineffective habits. So here's an ineffective habit. Habit number one would be to be react. Um, blame all problems on everyone else. Victim mentality, not responsible for their own actions and behaviors. Uh, defense attack mode, um, it's his fault, not our fault. Um, so that's one way of 
of a habit, um, the opposite of that would be to be proactive, not necessarily to be reactive. Um, someone else is joining us. Habit number two, begin with no end in mind. So no plan, um, the person um, has no thoughts for the future or no thoughts about consequences or actions. Um, the opposite with that, of that, of course, would be begin with the end in mind instead of the end in no mind. Habit number three would be put first, put first things last. Wait until the last minute to complete important tasks or maybe tasks that you're not really comfortable with um, or maybe tasks that you don't really like. Um, maybe your priorities are the phone, internet, social media, TV, and other tasks before important responsibilities or deadlines. So we wanna make sure that we put first things first. Habit number four, think when lose. Um, what that means is life is viewed as, um, as a vicious competition and believes that in life there is no room for no winner unhappy and envious and, and of, of others successes. However, on a positive note, um, if we change the way that we look at things, um, we wanna think win-win situations. Habit number five, um, if you're the kind of person that, um, that um, seek first to talk and then pretend to listen, Maybe this is a habit that you might want to um, reflect on and change, uh, meaning there's really no interest in other thoughts or opinions. Um, maybe the person may pretend to be listening and nodding their head and saying, aha, uh -huh, but they're really not listening. Um, so a positive or um, the way Kobe would, would put this would be seek first to understand and then to be understood. Habit number six, excuse me, don't cooperate. No interest in teamwork, refuse to collaborate and share ideas, finds no value in others' thoughts or ideas. Um, well, uh, this is probably a habit that um, you would probably wanna replace with, um, with what I call a synergy. Um, the total opposite is, yes, we do wanna make sure that we have um, a team. If we're working in a team environment, um, two heads are better than one. And we want to make sure that all of our teammates are working together collectively and collaboratively to really make those win-win situations. Habit number seven, wear yourself out. You want to make sure that you take time to not burn yourself out. You know, we get so busy in life that we never take time to renew or improve ourselves. Um, never study, don't learn any new things, avoid exer exercises, books, nature, anything else that may inspire you. Um, so we want to make sure that um, uh, what I think Kobe says is sharpen the saw. Yeah, number seven. So our habits will either make us or break us. We become what we repeatedly do. Completely agree with this. Um, as a writer, Samuel Smile put it, saw, sow a thought and you react an act. Sow an act and you react an habit. So a habit and you're up a character and so a character and you're up a destiny. Are there times when we all, any questions so far? No, okay. Um, are there any times when we all, when, when we all um, find ourselves displaying these ineffective habits? I think um, sometimes I can see myself getting into maybe um, some in ineffective habits, but um, I, I put myself in a position where I'd like to um, put myself in other people's shoes and really make um, my situations where they're personal or at work, really make them win-win. It's more fun it's, and it's just, I like to live my life that way. So hope you do too. So the seven habits of highly effective people. Here's some types of paradigm lives. Before we get into that, I wanted to just run by again, um, what are some positive habits? So the seven habits of highly effective people are this, to be proactive, to begin with the end of mind, put things first, think win-win, 
seek first to understand then to be understood. Make sure that um, we have synergy and we sharpen the saw. So uh, these are some in habits that I've incorporated into my daily life um, to uh, make these win-win situations. So for a paradigm shift, in order to get myself from being the negative and, and it's always someone else's fault to making it win-win situations, these are some, some driving forces um, that are important um, to me. So friend-centered, stuff-centered, partner-centered, especially here at the, at the America's Job Center. This is a big one for me. Um, School-centered, parent-centered, sports and hobby-centered. So bottom line, the principles of being centered is really a real thing. What are principles? Give me an example. So example of principles would be like honesty, respect, service, gratitude, love, loyalty, hard work, and responsibility. Um, when I mentioned the first seven habits of the first habits, um, what I realized after doing a couple uh, research and, and uh, on, the, on the book, that habit number one, two, and three are more focused on self-mastery and moving from dependence to independence. Habit four, five, and six are more focused on developing teamwork, collaboration, communication skills, and moving from independence to interdependence. Habit number seven is focused on continued growth and improvement and embodies all other, embodies all the other habits. What principles guide you in your life? So the seven habits of highly effective people. Um, again, here is the seven habits, be proactive, put first things first, seek first to understand, then to be understood, sharpen the saw, um, make make win-win situations and begin with the end of mind. Uh, for example, for habit number one, to be proactive, um, real quick summary, I'll do a quick summary on, on most of these. Um, so we, we are in charge. We are, we control only ourselves. We can't control anybody else. Um, and we choose the scripts in which we live by. So we use the self-awareness to be proactive and to take responsibility of our own choices. The first habit that Covey discussed is being proactive. Uh, what diminishes um, us as humans from, what distinguishes us, excuse me, as humans from all other animals is the inherent ability to examine our own character. Um, I think I do this, uh, daily, maybe weekly, but maybe even daily, depending on, on what's going on, um, to really decide how we view ourselves in other situations and control our own effectiveness. Um, but simply put, in order to be effective, one must be proactive. Um, the seven habits of highly effective people, again, it's everything that I just mentioned, the first habit through habit number seven. Um, these are all positive habits to incorporate in your life. Um, for me right now, the um, habit I think that I'm probably using the most is probably think win-win. Have everyone, have an everyone can with attitude. Have an everyone can win attitude. Um, so everyone's a winner here. And if I, um, again, put myself in their shoes and, and try to really understand, um, then uh, we could possibly make things win-win. Um, so habit one, two, and three, which I just kind of mentioned, deals with self-mastery and moving from dependence, from dependence to independence. Habit number one, be proactive. So Take responsibility of your own life. It pays to be proactive. Proactive people, what do they do? What do they like? Um, are not easily offended. Take responses for their choices. Think before they act. Um, bounce back when something bad happens. 
always finds a way to make it happen and focuses on things that they can do something about and not worry about the things that they can't or can't can't change. Um, we control only one thing, how we respond to what happens to us. So that's um, habit number one and some of the, um, the characteristics and things to look for when, when we're trying to work on this particular habit. So reactive versus proactive. Reactive means he made, he makes me so mad. Proactive means I can control my own feelings. It is our willing permission, our consent to what happens to us that hurts us far more than what happened to us in the first place. Um, another quote by Stephen Covey. I like his quotes. I hope you do too. Think effectiveness with people and eff efficiency with all things. So begin with the end in mind. Con this is habit number two. Control your own destiny or someone else will. Define your mission and goal in life. Um, the path you choose now can affect you forever. So if you don't decide your own future, someone else will decide it for you. Um, a personal mission statement, a personal, create a personal mission statement. A personal mission statement is like a personal motto that states what your life is about. Is it like a blue, it's like a blueprint of your life. Um, create a goal, kind of like what we do here at work. We have missions and we have purpose and we have values and we have goals and uh, we want to make sure that we create that for ourselves as well. So a goal is one that you have a mission in place. You should set goals based on the mission that you're trying to achieve. Um, so goals are more specific than the mission statement. You can help um, break it down the mission statement statement to bite-sized pieces. My personal mission statement. I inspire others with my actions, but never forget the power of my voice. I laugh at myself and help others experience joy. I give before I receive. I do not fear mistakes. I create a welcome home. I tend my marriage. I am open to people and opportunities. I act on my passion. I read and observe. I honor my commitments. So those are some, some personal mission statements, examples for you. Habit number three, put first, put first things first. Prioritize and do the most important things first, even if you don't like them. Um, and we'll get into the, um, the diagram or the square where you can help organize, you know, whether or not something is important or a priority. Manage your time wisely. Overcome the fear and pressure that keep you from dealing with your top priorities. Never let your fears make your decisions. And the first person to climb Mount Everest said, it's not the mountain we conquer, but ourselves. So true. So here are the quadrants I was talking about. So quadrant number one, is it urgent and important? Then you do it. This would be a priority. Quadrant number two is if it's not urgent, but not important, you want to plan it. Quadrant number three, down to the left, bottom left is urgent, but not important, you delegate. And quadrant number four is not urgent and not important. So guess what? You eliminate it. Okay. When I first started using these quadrants, um, it was a little bit challenging for me to make these decisions. Um, but the way that I started this I is uh, just jotting down a list of uh, all my priorities for that day. And I incorporated not only my work priorities, but also my personal priorities. And now I use this quadrant pretty frequently now to help me make the decision whether or not it's a priority. So quadrant number one is the procrastinator. You examine tomorrow, late for work. Uh, these are some habits, you know, project due today. So you're wait to the last minute, you're a procrastinator. The prior, quadrant number two is the prioritizer. You're planning, you're goal setting, um, you're exercising, you're relaxing, you're taking time out for you. Um, so quadrant number three, you're a yes man. 
unimportant calls, interrupted peer pressures. That's basically things that happen kind of throughout the day that would push you, put you in the quadrant number three area. And quadrant number four is the slacker. Too much TV, games, phone time, endless texting and time, time wasters. So those are the basically the, the four quadrants that we're looking at. Um, let's see here. And the fourth quadrant is, again is the one we want to eliminate. Another quote by Stephen Covey: "The key is not to prioritize what your schedule, but to schedule your priorities." So I'll say that again: the key is not to prioritize what's on your schedule but to schedule your priorities. And that's what the quadrants will help you um, make those decisions on whether it should be on the top left, top right, or bottom left-hand corner. So the concepts dealing with habits four, five, and six, as I mentioned earlier, revolve around relationships and making them work. Remember the key to mastering relationships is first to master yourself. Um, what is the most important ingredient in a relationship? So the writer Ralph Waldo Emerson said, who you are speaks so loudly. I can hear what you are saying. If you're struggling in your relationships with friends, family, coworkers, take a strong look at yourself. Interesting. The private victory helped you to take responsibility for yourself and help you to understand that you create your own destiny. The public victory helps you realize that you are a team player and that you cooperate essential for, and that your cooperation is essential for success. Your ability to get along with others will largely determine how successful you are in the career and at your level and a personal happiness as well. Completely agree. So have an everyone can win attitude. This is a think win win habit number four. Uh, this is like the endless buffet. <laughs> the more giving you are, the more that comes back to you. Win-win is an attitude towards life, a mental frame of mind that says I can win and I can and, and I can win and so can you. It's not me or you, it's both of us. It's the foundation of getting along well with other people. It begins with the belief that we are all equal and that no one is inferior or superior to anyone else and no one really needs to be. Those are the win-win um, situations. Absolutely agree. To go for win-win, you not only have to be nice, you have to be courageous sometimes. So life attitudes, these are some attitudes that you, we wanna adopt or incorporate um, if we want to um, incorporate some of the effectiveness of highly people kind of attitudes. So win-lose, these people achieve what they want at the expense of others. C.S. Lewis wrote, pride gets no pleasure out of having someone, only out of having more of it than the next man. A win-lose statement would be like people with the lose-win mindset are easily intimidated and readily give in or go along with others. They fail to assert their own thoughts and feelings. A lose-lose uh, attitude would be people with this model approach difference with fear. They avoid conflicts, which therefore cannot be resolved and anybody and everybody loses. If I'm going down, you are all going down with me. Examples are war, possessive relationships. A win-win though, however, these people believe that everyone can win. There is more than enough to go around for everyone. When each person needs, when each person needs are, and interests are understood and respect and respected, it's possible to find a solution that benefits and considers everyone. And personally, I like to position myself with the win-win um, situations. Habit number five is seek first to understand, then to be understood. Um, listen to people sincerely. Try to understand someone else's point of view before sharing your own, and the whole new world will, will open up to you. Take time to listen without judging or giving advice. So active listening skills. Let's see if I have something else here that I want to
Okay. So please listen. Um, when I ask you to listen to me and you start giving me advice, you have not done what I have asked. When I ask you to listen to me and you begin to tell me why I should feel that way, you're trampling on my feelings. Or when I ask you to listen to me and you feel you have to do something to solve my problem, you have failed me, strange as that may seem. Because you're not allowing the person to really think and, and find out the solutions. Listen, all I ask is that you listen. Don't talk or do, just hear me. And sometimes that's easier said than done. Um, being an active listener, listener really requires you to pay attention and, um, but not only to what the person is saying, but also their um, nonverbal cues as well. Examples of poor listening styles. Here's a few, self-pacing, acting out or ignoring, uh, pretend listening, says, yeah, yeah, huh, cool, but not really being genuine, selective listening, paying attention to only parts of the conversation, word listening, listening to only words that, that not the meaning of the body, listening to only words and not the meaning or the body language associated with it. Sometimes for me, nonverbal cues or, not, or, or your body language might be more important than actually the words um, that a person is expressing. Um, so you wanna make sure that you're incorporating um, everyone and you really do adopt active listening skills. Self-centered listening, uh, listening to see things from our own point of view. I know I just, I know just how, I, how you feel. Oh, that's nothing. Listen to this, listen to this one. Judging, probing, or advising are three methods of self-centered listening. So we definitely um, don't wanna do that. <clears throat> Work together to achieve more. When two or more people work together to create a better solution, then either one could alone. Examples would be a good brand, a bird eating bugs off of the back of a crow. <laughs> Synergy action plans, define the problem or opportunity. Their way, seek first to understand the ideas of others. My way, seek to be understood by sharing your ideas. Brainstorm, create new options and ideas. And highway, find the best solution. That's synergy in action. So this is synergy in action. Look at that, the Lakers. Three-time NBA champions, 2000, 2001, 2003. So this team obviously has come together. And without doubt, you may have to leave the comfort zone of a base camp and confront the entire new unknown wild uh, wild wilderness. That's so true. So we're going on to habit number seven, the ongoing evolution of me. Habit number seven is focused on continuous growth and improvement and embodies all the other habits. So sharpen the saw, renew yourself regularly. Uh, it's me time. This is the time when you renew the four key dimensions of your life, your body, brain, health, and soul. The four dimensions is physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. We must stay in a healthy balance. If um, I, I didn't see where everyone, uh, we have about seven people on, on this um, meeting today. I didn't see what, what agencies you're come, you came from, but when we're serving others, we wanna make sure that we create a healthy balance um, for ourselves to make sure that we can be the best version of ourselves so that we can really help um, the people that we are serving. Uh, personal development. We wanna, when we work on our personal development, we wanna make sure that we have a vision. We wanna make sure that we set goals. Um, we're constantly learning, uh, constantly grow, growing. We're planning, uh, we're definitely motivated. Uh, we're training, being creative, and we developed. Okay, seven habits. The seven habits can help you with get control of your life, improve your relationships with your friends, make wise decisions, get along with your family, friends, and coworkers, define your values and what matters to you most, 
get more done in less time, increase self-confidence, and find balance between school, work, friends, and everything else that goes on in our world. <laughs> Reflections. What are some habits you are working on changing? And what are some of your takeaways from this workshop? Um, so since um, we haven't really interactive, I'll just share some of mine. Um, some of the habits that I'm working on today is, uh, see what's one that I'm working on. Like, like I mentioned earlier, making um, um, all of my interactions, win-win um, interactions, whether it's personally, professionally, um, it could even be at the grocery store, uh, but really working on all my interactions with individuals, uh, whether I'm serving them or just um, being in the presence of their company, it's a gift and I want to make sure that uh, it's a win-win situation. And uh, that's some of the takeaways that I got from this workshop. And this is the end of our presentation. I thought there was a couple more slides, but they're not. So let me go back into our room real quick. Okay. Let's see. Do we have any questions? Any comments? Um, has anyone ever read the book before? Um, I'd like to hear from you if possible. That was really excellent. That was just dynamite walkthrough Covey. Covey is awesome. It's a favorite way back from graduate school, you know, that type of thing. But um, I haven't looked at him in a while and uh, where we're at in the pandemic and where we're at with life and where we're at with our clients. Um, I have to say it was, that was really nice. And are you willing, I know you're recording, <laughs> but are you willing to share the PowerPoints and let us share with others? Absolutely, absolutely. So how best can we get that from you? If you could just put your email address in um, the chat box, I'll go ahead and copy and paste and send the PowerPoint to anyone who is interested in getting the PowerPoint. Love it. Yes, um, I had, um, I was copying some of them as they went listening, copying, I was multitasking. <laughs> and I wanted to share it with my, I'm, I'm Val Yerman, I'm from the Career Center at Santa Barbara City College. So I was like, oh, I want to share this because we only learned of this series today. Liliana shared it with us. And oh, thank you, like, Liliana. Yeah, I was Val. Kind of like, oh, wow, it, we didn't know it was happening. And so um, anyway, uh, thank you. And I, I would hope you're able to push it out to other people. Absolutely. And, and you are okay if we use it. I'm doing Absolutely. classes this weekend with our non-credit um, program, which is uh, career planning and then job search. And then we're working with a back to work program, Liliana and myself and Jana Mori, um, that we're kind of rolling out quickly. And there are some elements and a couple slides in there that I might steal and just absolutely what do you think of your style when we're doing decision making so if that's absolutely. okay I would love that absolutely well thank yeah, you yeah just go ahead good and add you. your email good to see you too okay yeah um same here I I really like your presentation that's a thank book you. that I definitely I have like a list of books that <laughs> so I do I so that's definitely on my list um I actually have it on audio you can have oh. it, you can get it on audio. I've been listening to it, but I like to have the physical book. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> Just the student and me, you know, writing yeah. notes and things like that. But um, I like yeah. that first habit of being proactive. And I think it's, um, if you don't take action, nothing's going to happen and nothing's going to change, exactly. you know? And so I've been working on really managing my time, yeah. just being at home, as you could hear in the background, my kiddos <laughs> I have a three and a one-year-old. So just being able to manage my time and finding, developing systems that work for me. And I think that's really important to share with students is what systems do you have in place that would be effective and you would be able to be more efficient with your time because if you don't take control over your time, somebody right. else or something else will right. take over and Absolutely. you would have lost an entire day that you could have been doing something that you wanted to prioritize. Absolutely. So this is, this is, this is perfect. Right on point. So I, I learned and over the cast, I've been in Santa Maria for about maybe three months now and our center is open. 
And exactly what you're saying, Liliana, happened to me. I came up with an agenda of what I thought I was going to do that day. And it wasn't until maybe about a month ago that I started incorporating seven habits into now my work life. And to make these win-wins, because I was being pulled left, right, up, down. And before I knew it, my day was gone and I never met my first task <laughs> that I wanted. So yeah, it's helped me through the course of the years. And, and I think what I've adopted is like kind of what you said about is I took a couple takeaways from the seven habits and a couple takeaways from other readings that I've done and kind of um, incorporated what works for me today. And it may change, I don't know, next year. <laughs> Okay. It's true because um, we go through seasons, right? Just like the year, spring, fall, summer, winter. We go through different seasons. And I think we need to be in tune with that, that we go through seasons too. And just because certain values are not at the top of your list at that time in that season of your life, it does not mean right. that it's not important and it's not an important value for you. Right. So I think that that's um, important to remember, you know, that, we live in seasons and during this season, this is my focus. <laughs> exactly. I think it's the, you know, with COVID-19, I've had a lot of opportunity to just really explore myself and kind of be like, what's working, what's not working. And um, yeah, just like managing life and finding that balance is so important for my health, my sanity, all of those areas that like the, what the sharp in the saw, right? The physical, yes. mental, emotional, and spiritual. I'm like, Ooh, I was <laughs> the physical, but then everything else kind of through like the speedy class that Val and I have been working on it threw me off. So now I'm like, okay, I need to rethink how I'm going to make it to the gym again. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And I have to change things to make them work. And the spiritual, that's something that I definitely want to focus more on as well mm -hmm. but for other people Absolutely. Here, sorry i don't want to take up all the space <laughs> okay so i this think is my that... me time. <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> this is my me time <laughs> that's awesome Liliana. well i think i'm going to go ahead and stop recording here uh just in case anybody else might have any other questions let me see here yeah